Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe. maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to this week's episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. We're recording this on June 5th. 2023 and it's just going to be an update for some things I've learned and observed in the past year and uh, want to kind of give you a state of the union on some things I see that uh, if you're a family or a player looking at this option I think is very beneficial that you know and the first thing I'm going to start with is expectations all right um a lot of my kids, almost all of them in place so far for college next year that were in their final year of prep school either as a reclass senior or as a post-grad, except there's a few kids at this point have not signed yet. And those kids have been kids that are pretty much D1 or bust, right? Now, pre-COVID, these kids are D1 players, all right? They know that, I know that, the prep school coach knows that, but times have changed with the transfer portal, right? So it is now June, and these kids have not made a commitment yet. They've wanted to walk on, they've wanted scholarships, they've, they've exhausted all their angles, and there's nothing quite there yet. So... They can go D2, they can go JUCO if they want to go that route. They could try D3s, um, but they're not wanting that. So what I want people to know in this conversation is that I know you might be a D1 player. I know that might be your goal. You have to be able to accept that that might not be your course, all right? Um, The problem I see here when kids are not satisfied with the prep school experience is when their expectations aren't met. So me, when when I first talk to a family... I make it brutally clear that even though you might spend the money, spend the time doing prep school, it does not guarantee a scholarship. It does not guarantee a D1 roster spot. You know, There's a lot that goes into it to include your prep school coach reaching out to you, what he thinks your level is, and who needs someone in your position with your, with your grades and everything. So um, just I just warn you. And I'm saying that. The coaches are saying this. Um, everybody's saying this right now in the prep school world just to temper expectations, all right? Not to not to put a damp cloth on, on your dreams. It's just the reality right now with the transfer portal. So just something to consider, all right? Also, I've had some West Coast kids come out east to go to prep school. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, the most interest they're getting are from prep schools within the East Coast, or I'm sorry, colleges within the East Coast that are closer to prep schools where the prep school coaches have more connections and where these East Coast colleges and universities have easier access to see these players, okay? So, what do you do in that instance? Well, if you're from the West Coast, um, a good thing to do is to let your dream schools or schools recruiting you know that you're going to go out East for prep school so they can keep tabs on you. You can also reach out yourself, or when you're initially talking to these prep school coaches, you can let them know, hey, my goal is to play out West or in the you know Mountain West or wherever do you have contacts out there? Will you reach out to these coaches on my behalf? They'll do that, but just know these East Coast guys probably have more connections out East, okay? That's the reality of this. Not saying kids don't go to every time zone to play college ball from the prep school world. It happens all the time. It's just for your specific situation, it comes down to having good communication and good expectations, right? You might want to be in a, in a geographical location um, out west, but if you got a great prep school out east that wants you, that's going to give you a good package, that's a good fit for you, something you might want to consider. Okay. Uh, one example I want to give I had a client uh, who committed to a prep school, really high end, um, good basketball, good academic prep school. And then about a week later, he got entrance from a high academic D3 out west that he liked the coach, the coach liked him, liked the academics, liked the facilities. Um, so really a good, a good option. And he also got interest from, um, a low major D one about being a walk on. So this kid who is now going to go do a postgrad here and see what happens now had two options come on his plate, right? So what does he do? Does he go to the prep school and get the extra summer of AAU, the extra year development, the extra year of exposure. And this is important exposure for a kid from the West coast, right? Like we mentioned earlier, he's going to get a lot of viewing from East coast schools, Does he go to the high academic D3 where he'd be very happy, but maybe not as prepared to play right away? Or does he walk on D1 at this, uh, at this low major? Now this low major, not going to mention the name of that or the D3 school, but it doesn't have any basketball history. 
Um, it's in the middle of nowhere. No one's ever heard of it. I don't know who's come out of that place. So it would just be for D1. And we've talked many times on this podcast about the pros and cons of being a walk-on and how, what my thoughts are on that. But in the end, um, I thought the best option for him personally would have been to go to prep school, right? See what comes from this year. Wonder what other options you can get besides just these two, which are not bad options. But you were doing this post-grad year all along to bet on yourself and see what can come from it, right? So one option is, you know, you do this year at prep school, you go back to this high academic D3, and now you're better ready to succeed in the classroom, contribute in the court versus having to wait a year. So there are benefits to that, or your even better fit for you might come out of the woodwork that you would not have experienced had you not done the post-grad year. So the kid ended up, after doing a lot of talking and a lot of thinking, uh, he followed his gut, which I say a lot is, you know, I think that's very important as far as figuring out what decisions you should make and chose to go to the prep school. So we will see, you know, what his options are after this post-grad year and compare them to walking on D1 or going as high academic D3. So that was my first bit of topic is expectations. Second thing uh, we're talking about is uh, being transparent, right? Now, one thing I deal with with families and a lot of coaches deal with is families want a crystal ball that shows them after this prep school year, what's my son going to be doing? Or how is this post-grad year going to be? Or how is this reclassing into the United States from a foreign country? How's it going to go? And I wish I had that crystal ball. Um, that would be great. But it also make life a little bit boring too, kind of knowing what's happening. So with this, tons of families are constantly looking for reassurance. And I just have to say, and the prep school coach has got to say, there's no guarantee on this. You might not like the school. You might not like the town. You might not you know, fit in there like you thought you might have. Uh, things can go wrong. And it doesn't happen for many people, but it does happen for some where it's just not the right fit or, or, or for one reason or another. Um, so you just have to do your due diligence, all right? Make visits if you can. Talk via Zoom to these coaches if you can't. Do virtual tours. Talk to people like me. Um, if you're one of my clients, talk to other people and follow your gut, right? At the end of the day, you can do all your due diligence, but your gut's going to kind of tell you which school might be the best fit for you. It's very important to follow that, but there's no crystal ball. You might go through this year and, and, and you know, might have aspirations at D1 and you end up going to a D3 school. That That's great, right? You didn't know that was going to happen, but that's okay. That might be where you need to end up. Everyone usually ends up where they need to end up at the time. Not usually. Let me just take that back. Everyone ends up where they need to end up at that point in life. If it's not where you want to be, that could be a good thing. Look, the story I always tell is I originally committed to Navy. That was my dream school. David Robinson, who played at Navy, was my favorite player. Super excited to go there. And that fell through. And I ended up playing at Air Force. But I think, had that assistant coach at Navy not pulled that scholarship offer from me and my commission, or my, not my commission, my commitment to the academy, I never would have experienced Air Force and all the friends and experience I had there. So it worked out actually great. And while we're used to, to, to not be happy with that assistant coach, he's still coaching D1. Um, we see him on the sidelines during March Madness. And I now am grateful he did that because without that, uh, who knows where my life would have been if I had gone to the Navy. I'm sure it would have been fine and great, but I don't know any better. So my point is there's no crystal ball in that. Do due diligence. Trust your gut. Uh, third thing I want to talk about, I've had a couple of international families um, want to pick a prep school based on the summer program. So, hey, I'm going to come to your prep school in the fall, but do you have something you can do for my kid from June, July, and August so he can train in the summer? And prep schools, you know, we've had a couple deal with um, numerous families that have asked this, and they have not come up with an idea. They That's not their responsibility, all right? They can offer suggestions like, hey, there's this camp is good. Try this elite camp out. We've had success with it, but a prep school is not responsible for planning your summer activities and getting you from point E8, you know, this camp to that camp, to staying at a kid's house for training sessions, to going to Disneyland. Like that is not what these prep school coaches do. So for summer, you can come over on your own, stay with family, find someone to, to you know, to escort you around. Just know that is not the prep school coach's responsibility. I've helped with that in the past a little bit. There are some places that do offer camps for most of the summer uh, that could be a good option but prep schools are not responsible for finding you uh, places to stay and things to do during the summer that is on you as a player okay next thing fine print 
So when you commit to a prep school, you're eventually going to have to sign a contract and there's fine print in there. All right. And you probably should ask for the contract or the handbook ahead of time. So you can go through there and ask questions before you put your deposit down. Uh, I had a client that put a deposit down. They got a handbook and there were all these rules in there that they had not heard for, heard about from you know the administration or the coach that uh, talked them through this whole process. And it was so, they, they were just, they didn't agree with it that they pulled their contract and signed with another prep school. Um, so here's some of the things that you need to ask in your due diligence and look in the fine print. At your prep school, even if you're a post-grad, do you have to play two sports? Now, some prep schools for basketball players, that second sport might be weightlifting or cross country, something that can kind of, you know, uh, piggyback on your basketball experience and not get too much in the way, but actually help it. Other places, you're going to have to play a completely different sport, like a volleyball, a baseball, a soccer, something like that. Um, one of my clients I know went to prep school for uh, basketball. He had to play football and got injured in the last football game and, and missed most of the basketball season. So there are risks with that too. Some prep schools require you to do two sports. Some let you do basketball full-time. It's kind of changing more in that direction as this, as the this sport's getting more specialized and that's what consumers and, and, and players want but there will still be prep schools that require you to do two sports and I, there are pros and cons to each of that you can look at my podcast and see conversations i've had with coaches about doing two sports but there are pros and cons i get the pros i also get the cons right you're paying this money you're traveling so you can take advantage of all the basketball opportunities that these prep schools offer Another thing in fine print, can you have a car on campus? If you're a 19-year-old postgrad, some schools don't let you have a car. Some don't let you leave campus. Some have curfews. Uh, actually, most have curfews. Most don't let you leave campus during the week. So that's something to think about and ask as well. And then when you get the tuition, right? Like say you're going to a prep school and you're, for example, say I want to pay $40,000. And they give you a contract for $40,000, but then you've got... You know, if you're international, $2,000 for insurance. Athletic fees are $800. Book fees are $200. Just make sure up front you get that number and just know it's all negotiable. All right? It is all negotiable. Um, all right, last thing is the future. So prep schools, what have I seen changing this year? Well, I tell you what, it's June 5th now, and most prep school roster spots are filled. There is a couple spots here and there. There's a couple programs where coaches have changed that have a lot more roster spots than didn't. Um, last year. So it is, uh, the key is to start early, right? If you can start in August, September for the following year, that's great. If you realize your season is going to end in March and you don't have options and want to go pro grad, I would start in March. But those that wait, there's just less and less options. So kids trying to sneak in at cheaper prices, it's not happening as much because these, these schools know there's such demand out there and so little supply of roster spots that they can keep the prices high and someone's going to pay it if they're patient enough between June, which is now, and August. So anyway, that's my two cents on this. Um, if you got any questions, please be sure to reach out. We're doing a big push uh, now to get subscribers to YouTube. So whether you need to subscribe or not, whether you're wanting to hear this stuff uh, when it comes out or not, or if you listen on the po podcasting platforms, that's what I do. I don't watch stuff on YouTube uh, podcasts. I just listen to them. But if you guys could go over to YouTube and subscribe, um, that's how we're really trying to grow the business because that's how a lot of people are finding out uh, all the information that we offer on prep schools. So thank you for that. Uh, enjoy your summer. If you guys got any questions, want to talk about uh, still getting place for next year, call me. If you want to start the process early and uh, look at 24, 25, we can do that as well. But in the meantime, stay safe. Keep working on your game this summer. If you're a player, if a parent, do research, talk to people, reach out to me. And uh, thanks so much as always for tuning in to the Prep Athletics Podcast. My name is Corey Heights, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.